All right, we are just gonna get right into it. I have already roasted a whole butternut squash. So this is the, what I'm calling a butternut squash tenderloin, right? Whole thing in the oven, 200 degrees, roasted about 45 minutes to an hour. It depends on the size. And now I'll show you a quick trick. As, as it's cooking in the oven, to tell when it's done, I just pull it out and when it, you can pass a skewer through it easily, that's the test and that's when it's done. You pull it out and you allow it to cool. Now you can either do this the day before and have it ready to go the next day so it's really easy and it's all cooled down or do it a couple hours ahead of time. Take the butternut, just like it is, cut off the top like that and cut off the bottom like this. So I take it and I cut probably about right here, trying to guess where the seeds are. And you can see there's a little bit of seeds there. So what I'll do is scoop this bit out. Just a little bit of seeds, there's not much and you can see. There's not much. I'll just scoop that out. Okay, we'll leave that there for a second. And this is still warm because I just pulled it out of the oven recently. And then this part with the seeds, all I do is I take this Scoop out the seeds. Mm -mm -mm. And then I'll just peel this off. Sometimes depends on if it's, if it's easy, if the skin comes off easy, which this one seems to be. Mm -mm -mm. If it doesn't come off that easy, it's okay, don't fret, just to get what you can off and scoop out. This is the extra bit. I usually add this to mashed potatoes or just quickly smash it up with a little bit of brown sugar or maple syrup or something. And you can eat it, add it to the rest of the meal. It's good. I just don't wanna waste any part of it, so. For the seeds part, I just take this and I put it in a strainer Strain off all the seeds and then just toss the seeds in a little bit of um, some of the seasoning, salt and pepper. Quick roast, five minutes at 180 degree, degrees Celsius. And then you have the seeds you can use as a garnish. But I'm not gonna waste time showing how to do that. You guys have that on your own. I'm putting this to the side and we'll use it later. Now, we have the tenderloin part, okay? Butternut squash, fully cooked. How to peel it off. Sometimes the skin comes right off. And this one isn't, but sometimes they do if you get lucky and you just peel it off. But if it doesn't, then I just carefully skin it. The key to this is to make sure that this is still firm. So as long as that skewer passes through, you just have to keep an eye on it in the oven after the 45 minute mark. Because this has to be firm in order to do this part. If it's too mushy, you just might as well make some mush butternut squash as usual, as everybody else does. But if you want to make a nice roast out of it, it has to be firm. Just trying to get most of the skin off. Try not to take any of the meat out of it. Okay, beautiful. And I'm just adding a little bit of oil, so I'm gonna coat it. And this is gonna help the seasonings stick. Now we're gonna just season it. So what I like to do is I put one of these skewers in and then I just take it, roll it around. Trying not to put too many indents because the, the squash is soft. And I wanna just make sure I'm coating this the best I can. And by having the skewer, it just helps you not have your hands all over the squash. And just get all sides with the, with the, with the spices. Even the bottom. Mm, mm, mm. Throw it, make sound effects, whatever you gotta do. And then some black pepper to this. Turn on it. Just really be liberal with it. Use as much as you can to coat the outside. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Again, rolling it, rolling it, put it here. 
Roll it, get that, see how easy that is. It captures it all. So it's nice and crusted. Okay, on the bottom, I'll just press it into that. And then same on the other side, press it into the other side. So now we know that that is crusted, okay? That's how it looks. I'm gonna wash my hands, we're gonna heat up the pot, and then we're gonna sear it, and then finish it off in the oven. Okay, so when the pan is hot, gives it that little sizzle when you add a little bit of water. So I am gonna add a little oil here. Not too much, I don't need too much. And the nice thing about having the skewer, again, you don't have to use the skewer, but it is it does make it easy. It's just to roast it right like that. I'm putting it on one side so then I can roll it on over. And I'll save this seasoning to add at the end. Now we're just gonna watch it roast. Normally I'd be doing other things. But today, it's one special day. I'm just gonna watch it. And drive these camera guys crazy. Essentially, we're just roasting it on each side. I want to sear it nicely, golden brown, cook those spices right onto it, and then we'll finish it up in the oven, and then that's going to be the main part of the meal. All right, so after we roast each side, after we sear each side, just take it up. Transfer it onto here. All right. And it does can get a little bit smoky, guys, so just be aware you don't have to sear it if you don't want. It just adds the nice color to it. You can roast it in the oven after you bread it like this with the seasonings. Um, but I do like to have that color in it. Just make sure you have a good fan in the house to suck up the smoke. So just gonna pop this in the oven now for about 15 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. Um, and that's it, and then it'll be done. All right, so we're about to pull the butternut squash out of the oven, and but first I want to do that before we plate it up. I'm gonna sear a little bit of the spinach. So we have spinach, the same pan we seared the butternut squash. I just took, removed some of that oil and wiped it out a little bit. So I'm just heating this back up, adding the spinach. Quick tip with the spinach and cast iron pan, I tend to use the greens to clean up the pan and just soak up the rest of the flavors that we've been cooking all day. It just helps with easier cleanup. Pinch of salt, just a little bit. Pinch of black pepper. Takes less than one minute to wilt the spinach. And so while that's finishing up, I'm gonna pull out the butternut. Nice and hot. Okay, we'll let that sit there and rest for a second. Finish up the spinach. Since there's quite a bit of water in here, turn it. let the water drain a little bit from the spinach. So it's not on the plate. The orange and the green, the colors will really, really pop nicely. It makes for a great presentation. Remove the skewer. So slice the butternut, depending on how many people you have coming, how big you can do, large, thick, thin, whatever you like. Great. Awesome. awesome. Okay. So now this is really, really hot. You want to be careful. Have the plate here. You tend to slide it up on here. Boom. Okay, guys. So this looks beautiful the way it is. Look at that color. Super vibrant. Now to finish it off, we have the best ever King Oyster Mushroom Gravy. And if you haven't seen that video yet, the link is right here. Check that out because this goes great with that meal as well. 
as far as holiday roast, and then we just add the gravy right to it. Awesome. So there you have the butternut tenderloin with the king oyster mushroom gravy and seared spinach. Hope you try it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Okay, cut. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Hex. Cut. <laughs>